Hi, my name is Fred Newman. I'm the owner of the View Camera Store, and I've received a couple of emails about a basic 4x5 camera outfit. So that's what we're going to talk about today. We'll start with cameras. Probably two of my favorite cameras. One is the Shenho PTB 4x5 lightweight camera. This camera weighs three pounds and it's under $700. It's one of the more reasonably priced cameras and you can see the review on a previous video. This is one of the cameras I would recommend. If you'd like a camera that's a little bit more versatile and it has more bellows, like if you think of using a 300 or a 400 millimeter lens or 450, the Canon 4x5 DLC number two would be the camera to get. This camera I think is 2700 right now. It's an incredible camera and actually both of these cameras do have interchangeable bellows. So it all depends on what level of photography you want to start at and what your budget is. So these would be my two first choices. And I have videos out on both of these how to use them. Another thing I'd recommend for all cameras to get is what's called a ground glass protector. Keith Canon makes these things. They're made for most size cameras 4x5 and up. It's basically a U-shaped piece of plexiglass and it fits around your ground glass and Fresnel so it makes it, it protects it. Because at least once a year I get a call, I'm in Death Valley and I broke my ground glass. And most likely they didn't have a ground glass protector. So these are great when you're packing. So this way in your case or anything else, it provides good protection for your camera. A basic lens would be like a 150 millimeter for your camera. So the two things you need is a lens board, a lens, and you would need a lens wrench to attach the lens. And I have a previous video on how to use the lens wrench. So basically, depending on your camera, you need a lens board to match. And I would recommend uh, for lenses getting lenses that have only a number zero shutter or slightly larger number one shutter. But number three shutters are great for eight by 10 and bigger, but when you have a lightweight camera, they're kind of big, big lenses to have and weigh a little too much. And I'll put a little list of lenses that I'd recommend, but if you're starting out with a one lens outfit, probably a 150 millimeter lens or a 135 millimeter lens would be ideal. Now the thing to remember is if you're going from 35 millimeter to four by five, if your favorite lens in 35 millimeter is a 50 millimeter, it's a three times multiplier. So the equivalent of a 50 millimeter in 35 millimeter would be a 150 in four by five. If you're looking for something a little bit more advanced, you might look at a 90 millimeter and a 210. Now the 90 would be more of an equivalent of a 28 in 35, and the 210 would be kind of like a 70 millimeter lens. So that'll get you started on that, but a one lens would be a 150, and a two lens might be a 90 and a 210. And I'll list a bunch of lenses so that you can see which ones would you want to get. And the only thing I'd recommend is if you're going to do very large enlargements, you're going to want to get some of the newer lens, like the Schneider Apo Simars, or the Schneider Super Simar XLs, or Super Angulon XLs, or if you like Rodenstock, it would be the Rodenstock Grandagon Ns or the Rodenstock Apo Cyranar ends. Those two would be the most modern lenses out there today and probably the top of the line lenses for you to get. The next thing I'd recommend you need, you actually you need to have is a cable release. And the ones we like are the Gepi cable releases. They come in red. It's got a fairly long throw. In fact, I measured it for someone asking a question. The throw here was 2.2 centimeters, which would work on most lenses you'd ever want. And I like the red cable releases because when you drop them in the grass, you can actually find them. Whereas if you had a black cable release, bye-bye, it's gone. So this is what I would recommend. I think they're great cable releases. We've been carrying them for many years. One thing I want to recommend also for the lens, you might want to get a lens wrap. Like for the 50 mil, like the 150 millimeter lens here, an 11 inch lens wrap. This is for a lens wrap from F64. Basically the lens goes in the middle of the lens wrap and you just wrap it around and it velcros tight and it gives your lens a little extra protection in your camera case. So lens wraps are good to have also. Next thing I'd recommend is a good loop. The one, I li one of the ones I like is the Silvestri loop and it's a six times loop and it's called a tilting loop so you can actually put it in the corner take a look here it actually fits nicely in the corner and it tilts and it's, it's a really nice loop to have so 
you definitely need a loop for focusing. So this is one that I would recommend. Also for film holders, I would recommend getting new film holders because a lot of times you'll buy a used film holder, it might have a light leak, and then you've got frustrations right from the very beginning. The film holders come in a two pack, and Fidelity is a common brand, and it's been around for a long time, and they're really nice film holders, and I say they come in a two pack. And probably to start out, you'd probably want a total of six film holders, so that would be three packs of this. And if you could shoot six different pictures in a day, you'd be doing really well. Now when I photograph with this, I use, with a film holder, I usually do the same negative on both sides of the film holder. That's why I say six film holders would give you six photographs, and if you could do six photographs with a 4x5 camera in a day, you're doing really well. Another item I'd recommend is one of these uh, four-inch anti-static brushes. They're great for cleaning off your camera, your lens, and also most importantly for cleaning out your film holders. So the four-inch anti-static by Kinetronics is probably what I'd recommend for cleaning everything. And it's good to have in your camera case or when you're traveling, but for cleaning film holders, these can't be beat. One more thing I'd recommend is 4x5 negative sleeves. These come in a pack of 100, and I, I like these kind of sleeves that we carry because they're archival and they open up. So this one, when you put your negative in, it's got a little fold lock for the top here, it locks your negative in. I don't like negative sleeves that you pull out because there's always a chance on the edges as you're pulling it out that it'll scratch your negative. So those I don't recommend. These are my favorite kind to have and they just put right in, put them in, lock it in and they're nice and secure. Another thing you might think about is one of these archival pens to make a little note on the clear edge of information about your negative. Like what I usually do is with these pens, very carefully I write the year, the film size 4x5, and the negative number. So I've got a little list right here and I use one of these little pens. And I'll list all this stuff in the back of this video. And one other thing I do, most of my cameras I use a ball head. I just got into using that with the smaller lighter weight cameras. And this is from Acrotec. It's a little adapter that fits on the bottom of your camera in the quarter inch screw. So these are good, and I'll show that in another video with my tripods. I hope that helps getting you started. As I say, I will put a complete list of all the items and some more close-up photographs of a few items. And I want to thank you so much for watching. And if you have more questions on things or emails, please email me so I can have, uh, help you out with your questions. Thank you again.